Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of The Real Podcasters, the show where, as ever, we're talking about all things movies, TV shows, video games, and a bunch of other things in no particular order. My name's Reagan once again, and I'm joined, as ever, by my critically acclaimed co-host. It's Dan. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Critically acclaimed. I'd, I wouldn't say critically acclaimed is the word I'd go for. Well, I would say, like, horrendously panned, but I'm being realistic here, and, and also nice this week. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I, I don't want to toot my own horn, but, you know, Invasion was... A film? Yeah. <laughs> the, not, that was not made about... Not quite critically, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not quite on the critical level yet, but, uh, you know. It was made at least 47% better with the inclusion of Dan as sound man, because I don't do sound, as it turns out. No. <laughs> no. Nope. No. Nope. And um, the director is, funnily enough, the host of this podcast. <laughs> what a coincidence. And he also actually. made a cameo as the figure. It wasn't a cameo, it was a... <laughs> it was a deliberate... <laughs> it was a necessary recast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I wonder, a fan. Is that actually in the credits, or is it just like Reagan Inglis directed, <laughs> written by the, the Scott Robson cinematography, Dan Quinn, so it's just uh, Reagan Inglis as the figure? Man, I'm pretty certain I have like four or five credits in that. <laughs> yeah, I think you do, actually. You're and I don't like it. Skit. <laughs> well, <laughs> no offense, I didn't have a lot of friends in college, so... Yeah. 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 Yes, it was a film. It was. Uh, anyway, we are now up to episode 51 of this little podcast that we do every week. Um, somehow, I don't know how. Fifty is mental. Like it's mad. <laughs> I know. I mean, People technically, listen to us. Y- y- well, you know, I would like to think so. So, you know, any kind of support would be lovely. Quite frankly, you can listen to us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Audible, Amazon Music, Podbean, Pocket Casts, and Castbox. Still no YouTube because internet's just evil as ever. Um, you can follow us on pretty much all of those that I just listed, and you can also leave reviews and ratings if you're very interested. That just helps us reach just a few more people every time we release a new episode. Now every Tuesday, as opposed to Monday, because quite frankly, Reagan likes having a Sunday night where he doesn't have to edit really quickly. <laughs> I'm selfish like that, if I'm honest. I was like, I'll just, have, I'll just give myself another day, just like another one. Um, I need a little day to myself. <laughs> I need well, a little you know, night to myself. <laughs> An hour or two before going to bed, as opposed to three to four hours to actually edit the damn thing and then wait for it to upload and then go to bed. Um, So, you know, as I say, reviews and ratings would be really appreciated. Um, You can also follow us on our socials for Instagram and Letterboxd. I've got my own personal Letterboxd. Dan has one for his podcast, Graveyard Chit Chat, which um, I'm pretty certain you do only log horror films on that, don't you? You don't log anything else. Like... It, as long as it's got, like, horror genre, then, yeah, it gets locked. Anything else, no. Anything else, just flat-out refusal. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. It's a flat-out <laughs> refusal. <laughs> but, ugh, I don't want some action film contaminating my list. Ugh. So, Shin... So, I mean, because I know when we were recording for Graveyard Chit Chat a couple of days ago, you'd watch Shin Godzilla, and I'm assuming, is that class as a horror film in your yeah, eyes? weirdly enough, because... It counts as a horror film, because when you look it up, it actually says, like, horror in the type of genre that it is, but for some reason, other ones aren't odd. Well, because some of them aren't really classed as horror films, they're just classed as hor- horrific Horrend- films. <laughs> yeah, they're just horrendous, horrendous. quality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Much like Shin Godzilla. We'll get to that in 2024. <laughs> Spoilers S- for, like, a year from now. <laughs> so much Shin. Like, there is so much knee. In that film. You're going to need, like, an XL wide-angle lens just to <laughs> capture one leg. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous, man. Uh, th- unfortunately, there's going to be so many jokes about Godzilla's knees in that film. And we're already going to be joking about that when it comes to the Monsterverse version, because that one's already, you know, a size. Um, but anyway, so last week we covered our extensive thoughts on Halo 2, um, so be sure to check that one out if you're a fan of that series. I think we still are, despite the grilling we've given the franchise so far. <laughs> fan of the series, definitely a fan of Halo 2, probably not. <laughs> no. And combat evolved to a degree. Yeah, to a degree. At least it's not, like, you know, stupidly difficult. Mm-hmm. And, well... 
considering we we covered a sequel last week, we're technically covering a sequel this week because this is in my eyes technically a sequel to an episode we did back in September. I think it was. I think it was one of the two episodes we did in September. Um, so yeah, we covered along those lines. Yeah, we covered um, the future of the DC Extended Universe back in September, and I think it's safe to say we got a lot of things wrong. Just two months Just later. a few. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> one or two was announced, six or seven were cancelled, and nine and ten were just announced. So, um, because I'd done some retweaking with the podcast, we, we stopped covering like new segments, unless it was like a big deal. So... Yeah. And because we also didn't cover Black Adam either, um, just because timing of that was quite awkward. To be honest, if it's anything like the superhero stuff we've been doing so far, um, not impressed. To so be mean, honest, like it probably ones. wasn't even worth covering. Not really. I think I would have given up after about 10 minutes. Um, but, you know, obviously with that one, we had Henry Cavill back as Superman. And six minutes later, ish. Um, <laughs> ish. Not really the case. Um so, you know, characters we thought would be focused on in uh, in the process of being retconned, actors have departed left, right, and centre. It's safe to say that it's a bit of a show over at Warner Brothers, so I figured, um, considering I'm sick of talking about Marvel, like, really sick, um, l- let's delve back into DC, but not specifically talking about an actual film that annoys us, for once. Which is quite difficult, because so far the last few have been... Um, What's what's the phrase I'm thinking of? Mm. Less than mm. stellar. <laughs> Which has been nice. Yeah, I was going to say, that's pretty much the polite way of putting that we haven't really had m- nothing too great so far. <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> um, so, I think, I suppose to kick things off, um, obviously we got the announcement of uh, James Good and Peter Saffron being hired by Warner Brothers to become the CEOs of the now created DC Studios, um, attempting to usher in a new era for the I'll say fledgling franchise, yeah. as opposed to broken. Um, so of the under Gun and Saffron, there was going to be a clear direction and continuity uh, between the majority of projects. If you can hear the quotation marks that I'm using with with my fingers, there's probably a good reason for that, because this is like the third or fourth time in six years that they've done major announcements of films that's going to happen. And, well, I'll get back to that as to why that might not be as major as anyone else <laughs> thinks. Um, anything that doesn't sit with that continuity, i.e. like the Batman and Joker and probably Yeah, Batgirl. like standalone things. Yeah, then they would be labelled as elsewhere stories, very much like in the comics as well. So it's outside of the main continuity and people know that's going in, which I think everyone kind of assumed with Joker and the Batman anyway. Um, yeah. But, you know, audiences can be silly um, and actors would be expected to play the same role over different mediums, which I thought, why DC weren't doing that is beyond me anyway. Um, so because we obviously didn't talk about the gun and saffron thing back back at the tail end of last year what were your thoughts on it when that all well i mean obviously we all know james gunn from marvel's sort of guardians of the galaxy which are really good films so i was pretty certainly pretty happy the fact that they actually got somebody who would actually know what to do with mm-hmm. a franchise so i mean he did a dc film he did the suicide squad not suicide squad the yep. Suicide Squad. That is an important very, very reference. Different. <laughs> very, very different film, yes. Because Suicide Squad is just um, a film. Poor. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, he did nice. this. Uh, I really like the Suicide Squad, and it has James Gunn written all over it, really. You can mm-hmm. see a lot of like the marvelness sort of rubbed off onto it. It's really good. So when they announced that he would be taking over DC's creativity... I mean, what can I say? I was like, oh, well, you know, he's made Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy did very well, so DC's probably got a chance. <laughs> mm-hmm. Unlike before, when it was just pretty much just digging itself a bigger and bigger hole with every release or cancellation that they were putting out. So, I mean, I guess we'll see what happens with what, he's, what his plan is, etc. Though... There's been some backlash, obviously, with Cavill and, you know, like, pretty much, like, half of DC's cast just being like, sorry, guys, 
no <laughs> we don't need you anymore <laughs> yeah i suppose you know we can talk about the lack of elephants in the room that's of course the confirmation that came pretty soon after that henry cavill was not going to be portraying superman in this universe anymore um despite the fact that warner brothers had told him to announce his return of the character um just after black adam came out um so naturally this left a bad taste in a lot of fans mouths Again, especially considering that they were led to believe he was going to be coming back. Because, in fairness, though, that was the case. Because the whole thing with Gunn and Saffron didn't happen until, like, November or December, I think it was. Yeah, it was pretty pretty late last year. Like, I want to say, like, maybe late November, December. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, it was kind of like a really... (laughs) Surprising Christmas gift, (laughs) we'll say. (laughs) I mean, yeah, it certainly was. Um, it's like, so oh, DC already... gets a new boss. I'm like, oh, yeah. So maybe we'll actually get a chance to get something of decent quality. Well, that's the thing because already the studio is kind of on the receiving end of fan backlash purely because Cavill's not involved now. Well, yeah, because I think a lot which of people he hadn't been just for a couple see, of years anyway. Like, obviously, I mean, you know, prior to like Gun and Saffron, really the only films that make that we'll say an X franchise now because you know it's reinventing itself Mm. Cavill is pretty much the highlight of it like he's only a reason why I'd watch a DC film in truthfulness yeah I mean we will be covering Man of Steel I think in June or July with it being the 10 year anniversary this year so I have the the score of that (laughs) (laughs) yeah I figured you would I'm gonna have to listen to it again I've actually got the public soundtrack and also the unreleased complete score that's like three hours long. I think I actually have that one and I'm pretty Mm. sure it's either on like sort of like Superman like red cape or like Superman blue sort of like the suit. (laughs) Could be either to be honest I don't know. (laughs) Uh, There's one track that's just known as like the Man of Steel suite and it's like half an hour long and I'm like oh "Oh, yes it's 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 a long one but it's it's great it is great but it's a long one. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, we will definitely cover Man of Steel late, um, in the not too distant future because I would quite like to watch it again. Um, it's probably one of uh, DCU's only decent-ish releases. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, oh, is he going to say it's terrible? No, I'm not going to say it's terrible. I mean, I've seen Superman four, like how it. Um, but yeah, as I say, we're losing Cavill already. People weren't very happy. Um, But this was to be expected, and I'll get into why him leaving was, on the one hand, quite tragic, but at the same time, necessary. But I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, So it wasn't until January this year that we actually got a concrete idea of what this new era of DC would actually look like. Mm -hmm. Uh, We now knew it was going to be known as the DCU, so they've dropped the E. (laughs) So it's just DC Universe now. (laughs) I mean, let's face it, out of the entire alphabet, the worst one is E, obviously. Like, I mean, like, what? I, I've never really, like, <laughs> wrapped my head around, like, extended universe, because what's extended about it? Well, you wonder what like, the worst thing is? It's just universe, it's like... like <laughs> it's like Marvel having, actually... like, MCEU. Marvel's, yeah. Marvel, Marvel Extended Universe. It's like, why? Mm-hmm. The worst thing is, though, is that, that that was an unofficial name. That was adopted by the press, it was never actually an official name given to this Ugh. universe, and then eventually one was like, oh, we'll just call it that. We'll just coin like, it. Again, you haven't got a plan, have you? Um, but yes, as I said, January came and we got some, pro- some proper details. Uh, we got news on um, on a couple of the films and a couple of the TV shows that would encompass aspects of what they were calling Chapter 1, um, Gods and Monsters. It's like, ooh, it sounds more universal, if I'm honest, than um, than Superhero. But we don't need to talk about the Universal Dark Universe stuff. I, I would rather not, to be honest. Because that one's even funnier. Just like, oh yeah, look at us. We're, we're going to make a universe one film later. <clears throat> Maybe not. We kind of screwed up. Bloody mummy, I swear to God. <laughs> um, so, Sabine, how much of the announcements did you do you know about? Or have you kind of just been... I mean, I have i couldn't really say, to be honest, because I've just sort of seen like every... The only announcements that I'm truly and utterly aware of is just like, well, the cancellation of Batgirl, but that's not really like 
too relevant. Uh, obviously, Cavill leaving uh, a couple of films, but again, can't really remember what they are. Like, you know, they're, they're kind of promising too much, really, and The Flash as well. So, I I don't know. It's too I've probably seen more than I realise, but... Mm again not too memorable because I don't really care at this point in time about it because I'm just sort of waiting for them to actually do something good not decent yeah, essentially good because fans deserve something good mm-hmm. I mean like, it's a good idea to bring up the flash because that's that one's out next month or the month after I've, I forget if it's May or June when it comes out in the UK because I think initially I had it as May but then the trailers had it as June and I'm like I'm, I'm hoping it's not like a month difference between American and UK June. release. I mean, I think it could be. I mean, it might be. It might be that it comes out in the states in May, and then we get it in June, or vice versa. I mean, like it's already been delayed by like a decade. So you know, I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised month. that if it gets delayed again in like the coming months, I wouldn't honestly be surprised because this has been delayed like however many times now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I will get to those original announcements because that's definitely something to talk about. Um, in terms of stuff that got announced like for this new era, in terms of films, we have Superman Legacy. Um, later confirms, literally just a couple of weeks ago, that it is going to be directed by James Gunn as well as being written. So mm-hmm. that's out in 2025. Um, All right. Not starring Henry Cavill as Superman. But it's also not an origin story, so I'm like, that's fine. Is there any word on who that. is actually taking the place of Superman yet, or is it just being kept in the shadows? <laughs> Uh, according to Gunn, there, there hasn't been any auditions or anything yet. He's just been working on the script. Um, right. So, but naturally, someone younger, I think. Yeah. Um, we also know we're getting the Authority, which is based on the vigilante team of the same name in the DC Comics. They feel more like a Suicide Squad-esque kind of thing. I honestly know next to nothing. Yeah, I can't that. say I'm familiar with that at all. No. Uh, we've also got the Brave and the Bold which is focusing on um, the familial relationship between Batman and Damian Wayne. Of all Robins to go with, that isn't the one I would have gone with. Me, personally, I'd actually like to see Carrie Kelly, of all versions of Robin. I think that one would be quite interesting. But that's just me. Um, We've also got a Supergirl film for the first time since the 80s. Um, Obviously, don't watch the Supergirl film from the 80s, because it's barely a film. I mean, there's the... Series as well. I haven't. I haven't watched the series like at all. No interest in seeing it. I mean, to be honest, of all the films that's coming out alongside Swamp Thing, which only just this week has been confirmed to actually be written and directed by James Mangold, who did Logan, doing Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. All right. Up. Um, so that one's quite intriguing. But I think the Supergirl one's the only one that I'm vaguely interested in, mostly because with the TV show, I did really like Melissa Benoist as the character. But the characterization was just way off. And I'm much yeah. further version in the comics because I like the fact that there's a contrast between her and Superman because with him, he's raised on Earth for like most of his life. Whereas with Supergirl, she's just, she's just a pig on Earth because of <laughs> stuff with the Phantom Zone and stuff. <laughs> she um, just appears. Yeah, it's like, ta-da! The script. I will um, mention now that I... I'm quite looking forward to Swamp Thing. I haven't written the comics. I haven't I haven't written the comics. <laughs> I haven't read not? the comics. Oh man, I could have sworn <laughs> you did. No, I um, I haven't read the comics yet, but I I will get to them because I'm very interested in them. So I, I am looking forward to that. Yeah, I mean it's a very interesting choice for uh, for James Mangold to pick that of all characters. But at the same time, I I'm glad they're going with some slightly wackier things. Oh honest. yeah, we're not just getting like some typical superhero stuff, we're actually getting something that's a bit different, you know? Yeah, and that's certainly the case on the TV show side of things, because we've got Creature Commandos, which I think is the first oh, yeah, thing they're yeah. releasing, where you've got like Bride of Frankenstein, um, who's who's actually going to be the main villain of the series, it's like, it's like an animated series, uh, voiced by Indira Varma, who was in Game of Thrones, and most recently in Obi-Wan Kenobi last year. I'm sure she's done a bunch of other things, so that's where I recognise her. Yeah. Um, she she was the um, Imperial Rebel spy person. Oh, yes, yes. I forget her name, but there's a lot of things I forget about that series. Yeah, the, the person who's basically just like a mole within the Imperial Legion, yeah. more or less. 
Um, and just in the last few days, we got the official confirmation that Frank Grillo, who was Crossbones in the MCU, um, and has had a lot of things to say about Marvel in the last couple of years, he he's really not happy. Um, he's portraying Rick Flagg's father. Um, oh, right. Rick Flagg, who was it? Who was played by Joel Kinnaman in the Suicide Squad. So I'm gr- I'm glad that they're not recasting that. That being said, I've got things to say on their whole recast front. Um, <laughs> again, later. Um, we've also got a series focusing on uh, Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. We've got a Green Lantern show. Again, um, the amount of Green Lantern stuff that they've announced, and I'm like, the last time you did anything with them was 2011. It's 12 years, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I still haven't watched that film. I don't think I want to, in truthfulness. <laughs> I'm also going to say that I haven't watched this just because it's embarrassing to say that I have. Like, I actively seeked it out amongst other <laughs> superhero phlegm. <laughs> superhero phlegm. <laughs> um, and we've, also got a, we've also got a TV spin-off series um, called Paradise Lost, based in Themyscira. So focusing on the other a- Amazons and whatnot. Oh, okay, okay. Wonder Woman, Which I thought, yeah. hmm, okay. Which I think they labelled as, like, a DC version of Game of Thrones. And I'm like... Right, okay. I mean, at least they're doing, like, things that are different. They're not just releasing, like, bog-standard superhero films every now and again. Like, at least they've actually got a plan to do, like, a series exploring other characters. I mean, like, Amanda Waller from Suicide Squad. That would interest me, because I like Suicide Squad stuff. The other stuff, I mean, the stuff with the Amazons, I mean, yeah, I guess so. It'd be interesting to hear other points of views from the Amazonian warriors, etc. But... I don't know, to be honest. Well, that's exactly that, because currently all we've got is announcements, and let's face it, we have seen this sort of thing before. Yeah, you know, just because something is announced, it doesn't 100% mean that it's going to be released. I mean, like the thing with, you know, whatever, what what are they called? The Warriors? Where Wonder Woman comes from? I can't remember. (laughs) The Amazons. Oh, oh, they're just literally called the Amazons. I thought it was something a bit more fancy than that. (laughs) Wow. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have thought, you know, being like, you know, God and stuff like that, you know, but okay. Pff, right. Lazy so... writing. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went there. Yeah, I think that would be quite an interesting one to get into because, you know, Wonder Woman, the one with Gal Gadot, the film, the first one, not 84, that one's alright, and, you know, it's, it's alright, but 84, no. So I'd, no. I would be interested to see, like, other stuff done with those particular characters, but you know, who knows if we actually will get that. Again, it's just an announcement. You can't well, yeah, say because... like, oh yeah, we're going to get it. We might not. It might just be scrapped mm-hmm. last minute. Well, <laughs> because up. if you think, because I mean, if you cast your mind back to 2014, just before Marvel announces Phase 3 and all of the Infinity War stuff that's you know, I'll still occasionally watch like the announcement about Infinity War back when it was part 1 and 2 and you can't even hear the music and the sound goes iffy on people's recordings because there's so much cheering. Um, <laughs> because it was big, you know, it was humongous at the time. So DC were like, okay, we'll kind of undercut them by releasing, by like announcing our stuff a couple of days prior. Um, most of which have either got cancelled, heavily delayed, or were just forgotten about. Um, yeah. You know, to say Cyborg was cancelled entirely. Um, the Flash has only just been released this year, ironically. Um, there was supposed to be a film focusing on the Green Lantern Corps, as I say, dropped entirely. Um, there was even the confirmation for Justice League that it was going to be split into two films. So I can mm. guarantee it was still going to be the Snyder Cut, it's like the four-hour thing, but literally, you know, at a point of splitting Across, into two like, parts. Across, like, two films, yeah. Yeah. They probably um, would have done it through, like, you go up to, like, the climax of the film and then you just go to part two. Well, that's what at least mm-hmm. I would have thought, but anyway, they just released the, the four-hour version. Or if yeah, you which... like me, you have the eight-hour version, which is basically the Snyder cut in colour and the Snyder cut in black and white. <laughs> Honestly, I've seen clips of that in black and white, and I'm just like, I could just turn off the colour on my TV, and I wouldn't have to pay anything extra. Yeah, and it's, to be honest, it's, it's absolutely pointless. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not interested in it in black and white, if I'm honest. Um, but then, obviously, they do all these announcements. But then they also start Green Lantern. Green Lantern. <laughs> they didn't start it at all. Um, they start green lighting. There we go. Terrible, terrible cut. 
Um, they keep greenlighting spin-off films that didn't need to exist. You know, we got the Birds of Prey film that's technically, realistically, a Harley Quinn film that's bolted onto something else. Um, yeah. There was also the one billion dollar success of Aquaman, so they're like, let's greenlight a sequel, but we'll also do a spin-off focusing on the trench monsters. And I'm like, why? Although I really did like Aquaman, I couldn't tell you a thing that happens in that film. I'm. I used to be a big defender of that film. I'd, I'd have to rewatch it again, but then I also don't want to, if I'm honest. I mean, um, like, I just I can't remember a thing from it. But again, that's probably another highlight of this past universe. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, isn't there another Aquaman film coming out? I mean, literally in December. In December, all right. Yeah, Ooh, this <laughs> literally December 2023. The word test screens apparently. Um, oh yeah, too... I remember because people were not happy with the test screens, so they had to undergo a lot of reshoots. Apparently, yeah, so I guess we'll see in December, <laughs> mm. or not see if we decide. Yeah, you know what? No, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> um, there were also supposed to be sequels to Man of Steel, and of course there was the Batman, which was going to have Ben Affleck in a you know with a lot of control from him that just went through various iterations before. Um, Selling on the Batman with Robert Pants, and yeah, what we kept getting essentially was just vague and empty promises of a universe that could probably challenge Marvel, and um, one that had a clear direction uh, with a great sense of continuity. Again, the quotation marks are back out because in reality that just wasn't the case. Mm. Um, and this is realistically the third time in like five or six years that we've gotten like a slew of announcements for DC. And I'm just kind of sat there thinking, what exactly are the odds that any of these are actually going to go through? Like, realistically. Yeah, I mean... It's disappointing in a way, because, I mean, I I haven't read a lot of DC comics, right? But I know there are some really, like, interesting characters in DC as a whole. Oh, for sure. So, it baffles me as to why they just go with, like, the most generic superhero or super villains, and there's other ones that could just do so much better with. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, like, stuff like Scarecrow. Like, I absolutely love Scarecrow as a character. He's, like, one of the best villains DC has. So surely it would make sense to do something with that character, because you could you could do a lot with it, because you could even go down the horror route, if absolutely necessary. Like, you really could. I mean, yeah. look at, like, I know it's a bit of a tangent, but look at, like, Arkham. He's absolutely terrifying in Arkham, man. Oh yeah, I mean, like especially in, I mean, I mean, as you know, it's definitely a hot take, but I still really love the version that's in Arkham Knight. Like, I really love yeah. that. Even just design wise, it's absolutely spot on. And let's face it, Scarecrow has only had Batman Begins, mm. and even then, I really like him in Batman Begins. He works for that. Um, but, but it's like you say, there's so many untapped characters that haven't there been touched. Are, there's so, so many. I mean, not just like from Batman and stuff like that, like from other, you know. DC villains and heroes there's probably stuff from like Wonder Woman she's probably faced against foes that haven't even had the chance to go on screen yet probably from Superman Green Lantern I mean not that I know much about Green Lantern I know there's like different corpse and stuff like that there's Sinestro I think that's a villain Mm -hmm. I think (laughs) I think yes yeah actually well done (laughs) Uh, Brainiac to be honest I could be here forever just listing like villains but Again, though, there are so many untapped characters in DC that you're just sort of limiting your potential by masses, really. And it's mm-hmm. kind of clear that they just had absolutely no ambition to do a film. It's like, oh, we'll just release it, and if it does what it does, and eh, whatever. Well, I think for me, one of my biggest issues with this whole announcement stuff is that, you know, the reaction from people specifically with um, dropping Henry Cavill as Superman but keeping the likes of Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. Mm. Potentially Ezra Miller as The Flash, we don't know, depending on what goes forward. Other characters are still going to remain the way they are. It's it, it it's a soft reboot. Yeah, and but I think for you me, have to do that, though, at this point. You see, for me, and this is... I've had to like constantly flick back and forth on this as to whether or not I'm actually... Um, for me, I honestly think that in order to properly make it work is you take the backlash from people and yeah. just fully reset it all. And that means 
you know, keep whatever characters you want, but make sure it's not the same actors. Because I think for yeah. me, it's going to be painful, for sure. Oh, and yeah. I have loved parts of the DCEU. If I'm honest, there is parts I do legitimately love. But yeah. there's so much baggage you have to deal with. No wonder no one wants to do some of these films, because it's just... There's so much. Uh, yeah, when you carry that he... excess baggage, it's you know it's just gonna weigh the film down entirely. Like yeah. So yeah, I can I, I think... can actually see why giving it a reset would probably be a, a sensible idea. You know, I mean reboot or reset. I mean, in in total honesty, it probably would have made more sense to just totally and utterly reset. It, get rid of the stuff that you just do not need. The stuff that is gonna cause too much baggage because at the end of the day, you're just wanting to really do something good at this point you don't want to yeah do another dceu again well i mean exactly and i think um i mean this is like an entire topic in and of itself like the idea of recasting and when is recasting okay so i've had a i've had a little bit of a think mm-hmm. um i'd argue that if it's a character that, that's existed in other mediums before i think it's absolutely fine so good examples mm-hmm. any comic book character anyone from a novel so like james bonds that's always like a big topic of discussion that kind of thing is fine because it's you know there's been versions before there's not one definitive version yeah um if it's someone that's like originated in the same medium so like for example indiana jones the idea of someone else playing indiana jones is just horrible no one would do that because it's so intrinsically linked to Harrison Ford. It's the same with Han Solo. Like, no one loved Alden Aaron Riker's Han Solo in that film, but it wasn't because he was bad. It's the fact that it's not Harrison Ford, so it's unfair to judge. Yeah, I, I think, think you get like a certain kick out of having the same actor do the same character that you, especially when you've grown up with. It. I mean, Indiana Jones is like mm-hmm. a perfect example. When you've grown up with that particular actor attached to that particular character's name. It's super duper important, but again, that comes down to personality, really, more than anything. Oh yeah, of course. And I just think that for me, um, yes, of course, seeing other versions of a character that you've seen plenty of times. I mean, obviously, like Superman and Batman, there's been a hundred and seventy yeah. different versions each. And yeah, did I like seeing Ben Affleck as Batman? Of course, I did. Do I want to see someone else? Yeah, because. I don't want any of that baggage. And, you know, same with Henry Cavill. Casting-wise, I think that's one of the bigger issues with the whole DC stuff, is that the DCEU, casting-wise, for the most part, has been absolutely stellar. Mm. But the the direction and the lack of planning well, completely it's just, screwed it up. It's lack of ambition as well. Mm-hmm. Like, there's absolutely no thought into these films whatsoever. Like, there really isn't. Like, you look back in... Honestly, like, it was no the wonder I watched more Marvel stuff than I did with DCEU because at least, like, I actually gave a hell about some of the characters. I mean, a lot of those Marvel films ain't perfect. They're really not. Oh, no. But my not. God, they are better than the majority of that DCEU. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I suppose it... I mean, again, with the Superman stuff, I totally see why people gave it backlash because at the end of the day they know Henry Cavill as Superman mm-hmm. but you have to do things differently because if like he's not necessarily bad baggage but he's attached to the DCU and people just want a different DC at this point because they can't keep doing the same thing because they're yeah, digging exactly. themselves a bigger and bigger hole like they're mm-hmm. basically just pissing money down the drain really well, yeah, because, I mean, you know, as I say, there's no actual direction. And, yeah, we've got all these announcements and stuff like that, and I'm sure... I mean, on the one hand, yeah, I'm positive that whatever James Gunn does, there is a clear direction. But the, the, the problem is, is because he's keeping some of the stuff, it's, it just means that it's going to be constant comparisons to what came before, like, mm. every single time. Yeah. And, and it's annoying, because, as I say, casting-wise, for the most part, it's pretty spot-on, like... Even, like, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn is absolutely, like, perfect casting. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And, obviously, now we've got Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn in Joker 2. I will I think say is... now, and this is just, like, total hot take, I really don't like seeing the set photos of 
of this thing with Joker 2. I don't want to see it. I just want to have it surprised. I mean, like, I've honestly had to stop following some pages mm. on social media because I am sick of seeing behind-the-scenes photos. Like, I just want to see it for myself. I don't want to see what they look like in makeup and stuff because it's going to totally ruin how I feel about the film. Yeah, I mean, I I've heard it. the theories about what the film might be, and I actually think it is quite interesting. Um, I'll not spoil it for you, so being, you know, I'm nice like that. Um, but it's it's very different, mm. which, you know, I liked with, like, the first film as well. It's very, very different. Um, so, I'm, you know, as I say, I'll not say much as to what the sequel might actually be, because, again, we don't know. It's not out until next year. Um, but... I mean, the last few stuff I am quite interested in. In terms of, like, the new stuff, as I say, the Supergirl stuff I'm very interested in. Yeah. I feel like I'm going back on myself now when I say that I would quite like Sasha Carl to continue with Supergirl, even though I've just had a big rant about about recasting. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just because I'm very intrigued with that in The Flash. I mean, yeah. obviously, I know in the comics it's, like, a depowered Superman. In this case, it's a depowered Supergirl. And I'm like, mm, whatever. But even in the trails, I'm like... Okay, I'm there. I'm there. Yeah. But also, the suit looks absolutely brilliant. Like, I absolutely love that suit. Yeah. Um, Not so much the flashes. Still think it looks terrible. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I know it's straight. I know it's straight out of the comics with the weird orange lines around them. And I'm like, it looks brilliant in a comic book. It looks brilliant in Lego Batman. It looks <laughs> terrible. I was about to say it, that. <laughs> in live action. <laughs> I knew Lego Batman was going to... Blade and come up on this and do it. <laughs> Lego Batman is peak DC. <laughs> Lego nuts. Batman. What is it? Lego Batman to Gotham. DC something. Something. Gotham. Some. Oh, whatever. That's bloody cold. Uh, Lego Batman three is beyond Gotham. I know that. Yeah. One. I'm not big What's on that. The and then there's. One? Uh, I think it's just Lego DC. Lego Batman DC superheroes or something. I'll check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lego Batman 2 DC Superheroes that's what it's called bloody hell I was right yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah I mean it's again I, I just find it quite funny that I'm going back on myself where it's like nah, recasting is perfect that's what you need to do but just keep this one one <laughs> just get rid I of mean, everything else if they do future stuff, I mean, you know, Joker being its own thing, I'm fine with Lady Gaga taking on the role of Harley Quinn, but for stuff that is going to continue the continuity, I would very much like Margot Robbie to continue with Harley Quinn. Because mm-hmm. like, she's great. She really is great. Oh, yeah, definitely. But everyone but... else, I can't really say that, like, I care, in truthfulness. I know, it's... It's really difficult because, you know, as I say, on the one hand, you either just continue this franchise and just see where you go, or you just do the full reset and somehow find a better casting choice. Um, yeah. It's it's basically a no-win scenario, I think. Um, yeah. At the same time, I am still mostly morbidly curious, I think, at this point. Yeah, um, I mean, there's there's definitely some curiosity there, but again, you know, I'm not, like, going to sink my hope into, like, everything that they're going to plan to unleash, because, you know, some of that might not even hit production, it might just be literally on a screen, like a test screen, it's like, yeah, we don't like it, we're not going to continue doing it. Yeah. Like, you know, it might, um, we might get a series, and it, you know, it could get cancelled, we might get a film, it could get, like, through production, and then it's just sacked off, so... Really, I'm not going to give my hopes... I'm not going to get my hopes too high, I think. I'm just sort of yeah. having a certain level of expectation, because I do want to see a good DC film for once. Oh, definitely. You know, because realistically, when was the la- I mean, I'm saying when was the last one. I still liked Shazam 2. I don't really think it's a good film. I still enjoyed it for the most yeah, part. Yeah, I mean, that's, I can't that's, even a good think... I- that's a good point. Yeah, that's definitely... It's a good start, I think, considering. Mm. It is a good start. But then technically, the last time we had like a really good one was The Suicide Squad, back in 2021. Yeah. Which yeah. And people that was were constantly... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of sick of the people that's constantly um, using like the box office numbers and whatnot to then say, oh no, it's a bad film, and then start heaping praise on the Snyder stuff, which we've already 
said enough about the Snyder stuff already. Um, and quite frankly, I really hope that the stuff they do now just completely just makes you forget all the stuff that's happened, like post four hour release, because it's I'd argue it's gotten even sillier, frankly. Because yeah. um, I mean, I'm sick of the discourse. But then, you know, if you've been listening to us for this year so far, we're also just kind of sick of, like, talking about the current state of superhero stuff. I think the reason I wanted to talk about with this one is because there is a glimmer where I'm like... Well, yeah, there is a glimmer of You hope. might have cracked us. Yeah. But there it's is a like, little glimmer for but potential. But then it's a case of, is it just, like, us being naive and in reality we're just going to be back to square one? Because yeah. I know that when I've been... Because, especially with me, I mean, I do a lot of scheduling for this podcast, so I've got almost most of this year planned, actually, because I'm not sad. Um, <laughs> plot is, we're actually going to hit possibly episode 80 at the end of this year. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we're on episode 51, so, I, you know, I'm nearly there. Um, but predominantly, most of the superhero stuff is going to be relegated to stuff that I'll just do, because, yeah. quite frankly... <laughs> Doing an entire episode on one is going to be difficult. The only one is actually um, the Spider-Verse sequel we're getting in June. Providing Dan sees into the Spider-Verse, which I don't think he has yet, has he? <laughs> Daniel. To be continued. <laughs> TBC. TBD. <Yeah. laughs> or T- TBW, to be watched. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, if you turn around and say you didn't like it... <laughs> I, I just keep putting it off. I just keep putting it off. Like, Don't be worried. It's brilliant. I And this as is much as I want to trust you, you. As much as I want to trust you with this, you kind of did me a... sold me down the river with sorry about the demon, so I'm, you know... We're really comparing. <laughs> sorry about the demon. <laughs> A Shudder exclusive with a budget of 17 cents. <laughs> to like a, to an animated film that has probably like a record-setting box office. Uh, actually, no. To be honest, it, it, you know, it, was, it did all right, but it didn't do massive amounts. See, I just um, came to that assumption is, because this is a film that just everybody likes, apparently. And well, I'm yeah, just it, is, like, it is honestly... I've got a feeling I'm really not going to like this film, and I really hope that isn't going to be the case. Well, if it does... We'll reach episode 79. <laughs> 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 like the end of the year, as opposed to 80. Um, but, you, you know, it's 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 like I said, talking about superhero stuff, it is becoming progressively more... Yeah. Annoying, frankly. Um, and I'm always careful as to how much we actually discuss it, because it's just a case of how bothered are we. And as I said, yeah. there is still... A part of me the things will be okay with this one, but at the same time, this is the third time in five, six, seven years, nine years, ten years, however you want to say it. Um, just look at the amount of DC stuff we've gotten and the amount that hasn't actually happened. And yeah. that really paints a picture. It does. And it's sad that that is the current state of it, because at the end of the day, fans just deserve to actually go see a film that they've announced they shouldn't have to like be in constant states of disappointment with like yeah we're cancelling this uh phew, this is just well it's somewhere uh phew, mm-hmm. back girl <laughs> who needs back girl <laughs> like it, it's just sad really like at least with marvel at least they continue with it like oh yeah we're announcing this it's coming whatever year and it actually happens like mm-hmm. with Marvel, you're in total believability that they're going to do it because it. Look at like their past like three years or so. They've constantly released DC's like out of those three years. How many thumbs have they released? Like, mm-hmm. it's a total. It, it just shows, as you say, it just absolutely paints a picture. I mean, it's you know it's a good idea bringing up Marvel because I know this uh, Bob Iger, who's now back in charge of Disney. Um, he said that they were reevaluating a lot of the Marvel stuff, so there's less being released in order to not compromise on the quality. Yeah. Because where has that quality gone? <laughs> the contracts. That's it. Um, so, in reality, what this has become is less of the future of the DCU to another installment of is there superhero fatigue happening? 
Well, um, it's not really the future of the DC. It's just the potential of the D- the potential potential of the DC. <laughs> <laughs> the potential. Yeah, yeah. Massive quotation marks there. Potential. Yes. Some films, possibly, maybe one, maybe two, maybe one or two. We call this universe. Shut up. Oh God. Yeah, talking about DC is fun, isn't it? <laughs> um, but I think we've, you know, I think we've exhausted that. I think it's safe to say. Um, I, as I say, you know, I'm certainly curious as to what they do, but. You know, we've seen enough false promises with this franchise. Um, I just really hope that with this one, um, we actually get something. If anything, yeah. I just want a good Superman movie. Quite frankly, I would Ooh, like. Oh, is to that go like another spoiler for for <laughs> us talking about Man of Steel? I think it might be. Dun dun dun. It's not. It's no, not. I mean, again, it, it's hard to really say what I'm looking forward to. I mean, Swamp Thing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that because that is just totally different compared to like all the other standard superhero stuff. mm Hmm. I guess we'll see about other things, really. Like, I can't say I'm too excited, but I'm not like, you know, ugh, I'm not going to bother with it, because mm. I'm just like, well, it, it's going to kind of depend on whether or not DC actually bothers to do something with it. Well, exactly. It's just the case of what actually gets released and what just gets changed. Yeah. And who gets put in charge again in about an hour, <laughs> if I'm being generous. Um, but yes, that has been us discussing the... The thing of the DCU. <laughs> Can't really call it the future now because it's just a couple of other things. The thesis on the DC. <laughs> <laughs> the thesis, yeah, okay. Uh, well, I mean, as long as we've hit the word count, then it's fine. I mean, surely, like, <laughs> we're at like 50 <laughs> odd minutes. I'm, I'm thinking we'll probably hit it. Possibly. Um, but yes, that's been us talking about that. Um, really hope you enjoyed us. Uh, as ever, all of our socials and stuff are in the description. Uh, next week, this is the way. I had to say it, I'm sorry. Um, oh, we will you, be discussing... No. Oh, you, you didn't, did you? Now, you had to now, do it. You now. had to do it. We're going from one fluctuating franchise to another. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mandalorian Season 3 ends this week as of when this episode goes out Um, in fact it goes out tomorrow as of when this episode goes out Uh, so for the next episode we will be discussing Mandalorian Season 3 of which um, I'm assuming Dan will start watching yesterday as of when this episode goes out (laughs) one episode in Mm -hmm. (laughs) the rest Um, is to be uh, continued (laughs) And the, and everything will be reported back in a week. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so you can look forward to that. Um, but until then, uh, thank you very much for listening. It's goodbye from Dan. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.